anything you know about it, throw it out the window. It does not apply here. Yeah. A new set of heads every pass. It drives off of this lug. Yeah, you can see not the, the wheel stud. You can see the So yes, get to go here in the pits with Clay. Awesome. They're just getting ready to warm up. And when I'm not in the way, I'll go over and look at stuff. I think that's cool. Yeah, I like the trailer, how the trailer's set up. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we'll check out the whole thing. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, if we can, yeah, that's how it all comes together with the team and works and like Yep, how everybody works together in here. Yeah, that's the stuff I think is pretty cool. cool. I mean not that the performance isn't amazing also, but it's uh you don't know each other yeah. kind of yeah i mean we've hung out at, it's like oh. actually wheeled in kind of by you at, at uh sick week in the blue camaro yeah. and turk was like that ah, like you're in the you're in the walkway and i'm like all right fine. jeff lutz is doing an awesome job of holding the car down and holding the diet coke good job jeff just kidding yeah i'm blowing up again Lance, but... did you on a roll hey, it's not bad, bad, oh bad, man bad. I was telling him, I'm like, All right, we're gonna you know, we kind of check out play. stuff here. All right, get to be in here. Play jumped in the car. Everybody's fueled, fueled up. This is gonna be bad. So if I cut and face, get out of here because I can't hear and can't breathe. It does yeah. make your eyes, uh, your eyes dry. Yes, it is horrendous. We, we may be okay. We made it to the racetrack though. Just in time for warm up. So that was probably gas that it fired up on there. They fired up the gas or nothing? Gas. So the squirt bottle is gas. And as soon as you. No, as soon as you hear. No, they need. They're so low compression. Need gas to They need the, they need the pop of like. It's like 87. Here. It's like. Whatever they can get. The cheapest wheel you can get. Yeah. That's interesting. And then as soon as you hear it change, that's Oh, that's one that girl, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so what Kevin's talking about is they'll put, uh, they're spraying gasoline into the uh, butterflies up there to get yeah. the fire, to get, get the kick. Right yeah, he's getting ready to do it right now. And then, let's see the fire. There you go. Then you'll hear the fine note. If you've never been in a nitro camp or nitro cars, it is a very distinctive sound. <laughs> Might be hooking the fuel pump some actually. That's oh. like the totally the, the first that was the first fire of the weekend. So oh. fire it just on the bottle to make sure all the EGTs lit up, like make sure everything's happy. Ah. And just and then they'll come in and, and do then it. they put it hook it back up and then go with the yeah, with the, um, that makes sense. With the with the nitro. See you priming it. Think when that happens, they have to back it off. Oh, yeah. Because it's got nitro in it. Yep, so you got to shut it all down. Yeah, I think they've got to clear, clear, clear the cylinders clear. and everything. Actually, what we figure happened is that when it or tried to fire and then shut off right there. Well, we've got a new, new ah, batch of electronics. Yeah, new batch of electronics. That is what you typically will find <laughs> when, uh, when it's in front stock, it's the exact same thing. It had misfire or anything. Just throw everything away and start all brand new. And so they're storing all new electronics on it. But what they'll probably have to do is, it possibly could have uh, cylinders full of nitro. So I wouldn't be surprised to see them pull the spark plugs out of it, or roll it backwards to make sure that it isn't going to hydraulic and blow the cylinder heads off of it in the pit, which would be really bad. 
Nope, so what it was was they actually, uh, Clay just came over and told me that they had, uh, they have, uh, not load, like amperage or voltage. They have some form of sensor on the um, coils, and as soon as they fired it up, it quit. Super cool stuff. They put seven Gs in the middle. Like seven Gs. Seven Gs. On a good run. On a good run, we're three Gs at the launch. <laughs> And theirs is in the middle. Metal. At two and a half seconds, I close that. Wow. Now you see that lever right down there by Clay's left hand? That's actually a fuel pump lever. He's going to grab it here real quick because he controls the fuel flow and pressure go into it while he's starting it like this. So he's got a fuel pump lever left here. Now watch when they unhook this fuel line. While it's running, this is, it looks, it looks dangerous, but it's not, because I don't think you can actually hardly light nitromethane without compression. Up when it leans out. Oh, yeah. That's all it's doing there. It leans, leans out and smooths up. So, yeah, he's, he's tailoring control, the. Controlling fuel. Yeah, with he's got the a lever right there. He's got a gauge. Or a gauge. Pressure? I think it's a flow rate. Like on oh, his dash, he's got a flow rate and he's, he's trying to tune that because that's what they do like their burnout on and like he could tell you more. Hold up. But, but like mm. that's that's all got to do with you saw him playing with it like first yeah. it was get it on nitro and then he's playing with it to to set a certain flow rate for them to do their job back there. Now they let the back of the car down right here because what they're actually doing is draining fuel out of the injectors in the cylinder head. Injectors I'm gonna show you later. Yeah. Very cool. Alrighty, here we are with Clay. Rock and roll. Now notice right here, the big tubes that are going from the valve cover backwards, it'll be on both sides of the engine. They go to this big black tank that has the comp or the ARP sticker on it right there. That is crankcase evacuation. So that is engine venting. Can't run big vacuum pumps, no matter how big a vacuum pump they are on big horsepower engines. It's mandated you cannot do that. You have to have a tank that is, I think the same uh, cubic inch inside of the tank is what the engine is. I think is what the mandate is. Uh, so everything from Pro Mod, any kind of blower, turbo car, any big horsepower cars never run a vacuum pump because you need to have this tank. Because if something goes wrong, your vacuum pump doesn't maintain and it blows the seals out of everything, blows oil everywhere. So that's why that tank has to be in the cars. That's why there's no vacuum pumps. A lot of the clutch time change. Yeah. Check out the size of those two fuel pumps. Huge.
Sorry, I missed the uh, turn camera off on accident. Alright, we're back in the pits. We got a new crew guy here. There you go. Run the dingleberry through. Got a bottom end guy. guy. Now every pass, they come back, put lower rod bearings in it. I'm sorry, upper rod bearings in it and lower main bearings in it. And new rings. Pistons are juggled around. We'll talk about that later and how they do that and what they're looking at. Right here, Jeff is uh, honing each cylinder real quick, and that's more for verification that the cylinder is okay. They'll pull sleeves out if they need to. He's checking push rods, making sure every push rod is not bent. See, one push rod is burned up on the end right there. Air bleeds. We give it a we give it a weak spot and then like they only put two laps on these. Oh, just in case there's something you know from the cycling. So they put two on it and then. Don't get enough pressure going up behind you from where that crease was at. Thing, you know? Gotcha. Cheap insurance. Yeah. Yeah. And like there's a. If those pop, there's Every a time they put in new burst panels and they double them up. I'm sorry, they don't double them up. There's just two of them. But you see this uh, ignition wire that's crossed, that's the pickup for the uh, magnetos. I think these are aluminum, so they shear and break off if it sneaks yeah. back through the blower. Yeah, trying to keep it and the heads on it. Yep. There's a lot of science in this too. Yeah, it's, it was weird to me the first time how much they offset this back and then it it screws the air forward and only blows it through that one little spot. Yeah, at one point, at one time I saw they had holes that were literally that big. I mean, literally that big. They had a shape of a triangle. Crazy. Yeah, I think I've seen that. What I'm talking about right through here is that the blowers are have this huge offset and the blower opening is the entire opening where you see that orange seal. And we're trying to get to look at the bottom of the blower, and it is all open on the bottom of the blower. But it moves all the air back into this really small section of the manifold. And I've seen them even smaller than what this is, the opening. But that orange seal is the actual opening in the blower. But no air moves right there where the solid plate is, so they plate it and force any, any kind of air that would be there backwards into the sweet spot, so to speak. By the uh, bad line in the wagon that... Yeah. Cause me to crash cars. Yep. Yeah, see, they got a date and part number on her. Each line is dated and part numbered so they can be easily replaced for parts in the trailer. Service the bottom of it. Oh, yeah, a little push, or yeah, a little studs goes on there so they can flip the thing over. And then, yeah, he'll roll yeah. it over here in a little bit and inspect the strips in it. Yep. Let's see here. So uh, these are air valves that they use to adjust the idle. Yeah. There's four on each or two on yeah, each. Yeah, I figured that when I and I saw them adjusting those up online. So the way this the blowers work here is let me zoom out here. Oh, can't zoom out. Is all the air actually screws itself forward and it dumps right here, which is right over there in the front of the manifold. The out of my uh, out of my normal league, but I know the basics of what's going on here. <laughs> it's, it's a whole other world. It's a different world, yeah. If they need a lot of air, they pull that one out. See, this one's already out. Oh. Ah. That's what they, like say the huge weather change or something, they can just pop that out and not change any of the stuff up there. Right. As far as your throttle position and. So air gets worse. You're gonna take one of these plugs out. Give it more air. To flow. give it more air flow. Uh, air gets worse than my air flow. What do think here? I don't think so. Simple mechanical solutions. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Quality of air. So it needs more air than the quality of air. Yep. yep. Maybe, you know, you got several of these because you, you have a real good sneezer. And, uh, what's the big poop? Yep. You have a real good sneezer and freaking wipes out the whole hat. Those things aren't cheap. No, that carbon fiber hat is not cheap. That's probably that's probably ten grand. Yeah. At least. Yeah, I think so. Put the cylinder head inside for work. Yep. 
Awesome. We got the oil pan already ready to go. So Clay's down there packing the chutes. Oh, yep, there he is. Yeah, Clay's down there packing his own chutes. That's cool. They've got that. Do you like using that putty lube? Like for engine fasteners? Oh, uh, peanut butter? Yeah. Yeah. That's stuff you use? Yeah. That's, that's, that's the first place I really saw somebody using that was... Actually, it's the same for first place I saw it too. Really? <laughs> yeah. And then it's on it's on fasteners from um, AJ. Gotcha. And so to stay consistent, to use it. Peanut butter. I'm waiting to fl flip this blower over because I want to show the in bottom side of the blower. Gotcha. It's probably because I think the blower is sealed off on the bottom too. Yeah. Nope, it's not. And we'll have just a small yeah, exit got, hole up in the hole front. There, and it's like it sucks the air in. And like you said, it screws it. It forward. screws it all the way forward. Yeah. If you leave the bot, if you leave the bottom open on these, it still screws the air forward, and then it actually kind of causes a bunch of disturbance in the backside of the manifold. Well, I've heard too. Like, so the longer they keep the screws sealed up, the more air it can boost, more boost it'll make. Yeah. So you keep the housing wrapped around it all the way. I think still warm. Oh yeah, it's warm. <laughs> yeah, the spinner. Oh yeah, cool. But there is, there actually, I guarantee you, there's a little bit of science in that nub right there. Oh, I'm sure. And that little over there, they figured something out. Dyno or uh, blower dyno. So they'll run a blower dyno on here, and they'll see where air's going, and whatnot. Crazy. Yeah, I think they were doing that the day we were up at what, Forty. Maybe take that off. Oh yeah. But it's wild that like what if, what if you, you can see every single guy's got his own oh, yeah. job to do one job to do each other's way. Like, I'm impressed they got this, lots, of, yeah. lots over there doing it. Now last year I helped play back and shoots for a couple of runs, which did you? To me, I'm a, I'm always kind of like you know that's the driver's job. They just, I, I, no way, if there's I any kind of problem with it, the driver's yeah. it was the driver's fault. I'll, I'll, he was like, no, nah, come help me. Like okay. Right. I let my uh, I let my wife pack my shoots, and I'll pack shoots, and I don't pack other people's feet. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, dude. I mean, I'll I'll show you how. Yeah. But I ain't gonna do it for you. I don't. I do not want to. Oh yeah. If you don't know, it's a, the, the colored strips in there are actually a Teflon strip. And uh, that is what seals up the rotors. I don't see any damage there at all. That looks good. Well, Uncle, as Uncle far as I know. I it, I yeah, it probably it. might have hurt itself. Might have hurt this one or something that oil up like that. We'll find out. Yeah. Let everything fill out. Keep in mind how cool this is of uh, Clay and his crew to let us stand around and fondle stuff and basically get in their way. I mean, I'm there behind the scenes <laughs> really getting to look at these things. It's pretty awesome. That's, ah, well, I forget what they call that, but it's, it's a, a really important piece of clutch. He's looking for broken arms, uh, anything bent out of whack. We'll cover a little bit more of this clutch later, but that's uh, Nick Bonifante that, right that is going over clutch stuff. Right there it is. <laughs> that is where magic all happens in these cars. Yep. Period. Always remember, uh, how fast the car goes is from the flywheel back. Yep. We. Especially in our world, we all make more power than what we can use. For sure. Well, my world. In your world. We, we, we all make, yeah, we can make too much. We all make more power than we can, can put down the track. So it's always figuring out how to get it down the track. That is the epitome of figuring out how to put it down the track. Very neat. So they had a deal, actually at Brayton, I think, going into the finals, where he pulled a thread out of the box. Oh, out of the main yeah. cap? Yeah, sure. They, they swapped the short block in like 20 minutes before they had to go. Oh, man. Like I said, every uh, main bearing lower in the cap and every upper rod bearing every pass. Then pistons rods as needed. 
You know, they, uh, the main studs on my head back cost me $82. Because they're that main. Proper brake clean can holder right there. How can we... Over. Maybe they already flipped her over and picked her out. Ah. I'm going to show you a lot more on the cylinder head later. So that's good. Yeah. Mm. Let's, uh, while it's thin, let's go yeah. sneak around. Okay. All right. That is the can, the bell housing that the clutch is in. You see, there's been some damage and some stuff flying around in there before. It's crazy. That's all titanium too. All right, so we're at, Clay is just telling me something that I said, hey, I think you need to say that on camera because that's really cool because I do not know that. So he's talking about, it looks like it put a couple holes out yep. and they can, A, they can shut you off. So Jim can shut you off, crew chief. Jim can shut you off. Yep. If he sees something bad, he just shuts the car off from yep. back at the starting line. Yep. But they didn't have the box hooked up and they're yelling at you to shut it off. It killed, killed a couple holes and what the interesting thing is is it needs load so go ahead and explain that yep. so when i say it needs load basically you got to have enough clutch pressure you're squeezing the clutch pack which loads the engine if it doesn't have enough load it'll make it drop cylinders the flip side of that though is if you give it too much clutch too fast it'll spin the tires and that's the balancing act that you got to follow yep. on a nitro car it just has to have load but if you give it too much of smoke the tires so i mean it's and you'll still play with ignition timing too yeah, right ignition timing so you got ignition timing you factor in too because yeah so that that's all affecting power pretty much but yeah. the the no load is what's fascinating me here i mean it's pretty obvious too much load i mean too much clutch it's going to spin the tire yeah. that's obvious yeah. not enough hurts engines yep yeah. yep yeah. it's that's that's crazy this is one thing especially with with your people it, and i say this a lot anything you know about a gasoline engine or an alcohol burning engine for the most part, more so gasoline. Anything you know about it, throw it out the window. It does not apply here. Yeah. This fuel is so weird, it burns so slow that it takes a butt ton of timing yep. and load. You know, it's just a- it's Can you say how much timing? There's not unusual, we don't do this, but there's not unusual for teams out here to run 60 degrees of timing. <laughs> We're anywhere- 60. 60. That's a lot. 60. <laughs> We're typically anywhere from 40 to 55. And, and when I say that, I'm not trying to be yep. hiding any secrets because you put a timing map in just like you would in y'all's cars. Yep. You know, it, it leaves with a certain timing and basically the industry does it. So we'll run a base timing for a half a second. And then we may take as much as 20 degrees out of it because we need the power the moment we hit the throttle because we need the tires to spin, believe it or not. Right. Wheel speed. Yep. But if we maintain that wheel speed, it'll smoke the tires. So about a half a second into the run, we, we'll go anywhere from 10 to 20 degrees straight out of time. Yep. And then from there, the quicker we can get it back in, obviously the quicker the car will go, but you're on that right. balance and that. So we need the tire spin to get it up on the tire, get it moving. And if you make that manipulation incorrectly, it'll smoke the tires, it'll shake the tires. Yep. So, but back to my thing on gasoline, I always like telling this too. So most of us have all had a Holly carburetor at some point, and I'm not knocking Holly, but it's got trash in it and it's flooding and you just grab the throttle, wah 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 clear it out, make it clean. This don't work that way. <laughs> if you rever up, and it ain't loaded, It's but you ain't gonna rip this thing up and clear it anyway, but right. it just has to have load or it won't stay on any cylinders. That's the same load, that's fascinating. Which you can see during the burnouts. They drop lots of holes oh, yeah. in the burnout. Yeah. But then it comes back. Yeah. Like, that's wild to me, because we were watching and you can see them flooding fuel out of the oh, yeah. pipes. Yeah. And I'm telling them, I'm like, well, that, how many dead cylinders that thing had during the burnout? Will that hurt it? Yeah. No. It won't hurt it in a burnout we're if it drops at, cylinders. We're not at fuel, full fuel. So that's one of the things I'm in there doing. I, I set the fuel pressure for the burnout. And then it, it runs and does the burnout and backs up at a, it's basically four, four gallons per minute is where it's at. 4.0, it's on the dash. I just set it, uh -huh. and do the burnout. Yeah, the flow, it, flow meter. It is a flow meter on the gate. And so that's the lever on your uh, left-hand side. Correct. Same thing in the warm up. I know I saw you filming the warm up. I'm messing with the fuel lever. I did. Basically chasing it, getting it where it needs to be because it follows the idle. The pump is right to the RPM. So, yeah. So I just get that fuel set. But 
on the run itself, when I turn the top bulb on, you'll notice that you'll hear a sound difference. There's two things happening. One is I've turned the fuel pump from barely on to all the way on. On TV, they, a lot of times they talk about two fuel pumps. It's not two fuel pumps. It's one giant fuel pump with two sets of gears in it. Yeah. So technically you could say two pumps, but it's one. Yeah. So we turn the pump all the way on and you'll start seeing the fuel coming out the headers. Then the second thing that you'll really, really hear is we're taking our foot off the clutch when the top bulb is on. So your foot is all the way off the clutch. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that pulls the engine RPM down. It's not a lot, it's about 150 RPM. It's kind of where we call that the tug. So how hard is the clutch and tug on the motor? Very important to have that right and the idle speed is oh. critical. Hold on. So, all right, so you have let go of the clutch. Yes. Oh, I did not understand that. Okay. Yeah. So the clutch is Out. fully engaged, fully engaged. And, not, and the car is not moving. It wants to, but it's not. Well, you got, you, and you have a handbrake, so you're handbraking it. Okay. Yep. And like rolling through the burn to do the burnout and all that. So that's done off of the tug. So whatever engine RPM it drops down to when you let the clutch out, that's how it rolls forward and backs up. We run a little more tug than some teams, because you'll see some of the teams pushing their car through the water and pushing yep. it to get it going backwards. But engine RPM and idle is very, very important because these are centrifugal clutches, essentially, is what they are. Yep. So if the idle is higher or lower, the arms of the clutch are trying to swing out based on RPM. Right. So the higher the idle, that means they're swinging it's more, yeah. and it's making more plate moving. Yeah. So it's, once you do it a bazillion times like I do, is you don't think nothing about it, but most people just don't realize our foot is off the clutch when we turn the, the pre-stage light on. Like yeah, this. no, I did not yeah. know that. Yeah. But it makes sense. Yeah. And then when you go wide open, there's a switch under the gas pedal that starts the timing sequence. Okay and the fuel curve and the throwout bearing moving away from the clutch. So like the bearing is on a fork, just like a standard transmission. You know, I could put it in neutral back, letting the clutch in and out. But it, once I let my foot off, the bearing is stopped by what we call a cannon, which is air over hydraulic. And it doesn't move until it's wide open. And then the crew chief has set in there how fast the bearing moves backwards. It would be the same as you taking your foot off the clutch in the street car. That's how it works. We can speed that up, slow it down. Okay. Infinite number of ways to do that. Okay. And that's what Jim was doing under the Yep. The cap. Adju adjusting knobs. Okay, so foot is off the clutch pedal. It is, so it's not fully engaged yet. It still would have a, a weight on it from the arm. So there's arms, I'll show you that later. So there's arms that are coming out centrifugally. That's what really applies all the power to it. Yeah. And then there is the base pressure. You call that with a with the the throw out bearing. So it moves. Oh, excuse me. On what we call the primary. Dang, I got the hiccups. <laughs> Let me get a water. Hold, all right. Hold that top. <laughs> it moves off of what we call primary levers. So the clutch has 18 levers, and all the movement through the burnout and all that is on six of those levers, and that's what I'm controlling with the clutch pedal. Oh. And it's got enough gap in between all the discs that it'll let it sit there with the pedal out. Yep. So once the bearing starts moving, it's applying more and more levers as the bearing moves out of the way. The bearing, the throwout bearing gets out of the way of the levers and lets yep. them centrifugally yep. grab the clutch even harder. Okay, so I understand. It's like there's multiple weights, and like they measure all the weights, and the length of the levers, like all that matters. Oh yeah, no. So they're add, adding weight. Yeah. We put nuts on the, the arm of the lever. Yep. There's black magic going on with the yep. radius of the lever, how quick it comes on, yep. yeah. how slow it applies. We also have we call them stops, so we can make we can take a lever out of play. It's just got to stop, so that lever is trying to swing out, but it hits a stop. So we can just take it out of play, or we can allow it to, to wear X amount of clutch and then, then come out of play. Okay. It's, it's so many adjustments. Yeah, right? it's, the clutch is the whole car. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Yeah. The, so the the whole point is from the flywheel back. Yeah. It's how to make a car fast. Yep. 
His car, my car, definitely your car. Yeah. <laughs> definitely your car. Yeah, yeah there's no shock to adjust on that. Yeah, there's, uh, yeah, there's, yeah, there, yeah, it is all the clutch. Um, I do want to add to that though, so again, back to TV, everybody's like, the clutch, the clutch, the clutch. But if the motor doesn't do what it's supposed to do, the clutch doesn't work right. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, what you need out of the engine is consistency. Consistency. It, need, it needs to make the same power every all time. The time. And what we're looking for is the RPM at the step. The moment we hit the throttle, Jimbo has an RPM he wants the engine to go to. And uh, I'll tell you that out here as well. It's somewhere between 8,000 and 8,500. Everybody's a little different. But the moment we hit the throttle, wherever it goes to, we need it to be the same. Whether we're here or Seattle or Denver or wherever, we want that engine RPM to do the same because that way the clutch is a little is more, this, it's more consistent. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. So it's easier to make the motor hit an RPM target than to try to make the clutch do something to the engine because the clutch is so unpredictable. Anyway. Uh, engine hitting an RPM target by fuel or by timing or both? Both. Both. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No different than y'all. I mean, you know, quarter second drive shafts really important. Where's the drive shaft? Yeah, point two. Hey, where's where's your drive shaft speed at point two five? It is about fourteen hundred. Wow, that is um, that's not this similar. Yeah. That's really that's actually really close. Yeah. yeah about fourteen hundred quarter second. Yeah, four, fourteen hundred is pretty. Uh, for example, fourteen hundred in my car is really fast. Yep. It'll use it'll shake right. out of there. But uh, 1200 is pretty normal. Yeah. 1100, 1200 at range. Yeah. Uh, really, I don't know what really, really fast Pro Mod guys are at. They might be at 1400, might be a little bit hotter than that. Yeah. Of course, you got to remember how big our tires are, and we have a 320 gear. Where every so car is mandated to a 320 gear. Yeah, so your 320 gear, I have a 370 gear. Yeah. I think most of the Pro Mod guys are probably around there. And then, uh, so mine's a 36 inch tall tire. Yeah, what are you? 36. So we got the same tire. Same tire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. same tire size. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yeah 1400, huh? What are you at? Point one. Do you care about point one? Point one, I would lie to you if I told you a number of folks. Always just patient. We'll go bug Jimmo in a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Once he, once he gets done with his job, we'll see what we can go bug Jimmo. I pay attention to quarter second when I hear them talk about it. And yeah. I do not get involved in the tune up. I've just done it for so long. They want my input, what I felt, where I thought it could go quicker, where I thought it was scary. Because you, know? you can still tell so much more by the seat of your pants. Oh, 100%. When you've made as many runs as When you've made as many runs, that's right. Yeah. yeah. I've made so many runs, you know. Um, yeah, he's, he's usually within five feet of shutting off, right at the thousand foot. Yeah, like he can. They've got a counter that tells the distance from when he hits the throttle, and he's usually within five feet of at 330 miles an hour, within five feet of the finish line. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of a game for me, you know. It's just whatever. Yep. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I just attribute that to bracket racing because I bracket race forever, follow yep. the cones. Yeah, it yeah. Sometimes it makes you drive crooked. By the way. Uh, oh, I know. Yeah, looking at the cone. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Cool Fascinating. Job. It's yeah. Very very cool. Top of the drag race world for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you much. We'll come back and Absolutely. talk about more crap. Absolutely. <laughs> ah, here is a very interesting thing. So it it, it drives off of this lug. Yeah, you can see. Not the, the wheel stud. You can see the wear on it where it drives. Wow. How thick is that? Wow. What do you think? And like, wow, that's pretty cool. Like, I guess that totally your, makes your sense. Your two wheels are kind of that really deep one-piece barrel, aren't they? Yeah, it has this. Yeah, this deep one-piece, the exact same, basically the same thing. Yep. It looks like a uh, a jet or a, a rocket yeah, like a exhaust turbine funnel, turbine. you know. That one's that one's got a lot more offset, but I don't. That looks like it's only got like four inches of offset. Mike's got. Oh, see now this is a thinner wheel. Yeah, for I sure. Think. I think this they're is, mandated on this. Got to be a certain wheel size. This is like Goodyear's engineer. By the way, those clutch discs are very effing hot. Don't touch it with your leg. <laughs> I, I, I just touched that with my leg. This is uh, that's a thirty-six seventeen five sixteen. The Goodyear Eagles. I, it's a probably a different compound, obviously, but the Goodyear Eagles that I just shook or shaking my brains out on are a thirty-six seventeen uh, sixteen. And we just put on a 16, or I'm sorry, a 20 inch wide wheel, and that is obviously, I'd say that's probably a 16 inch wheel. 
That's what it looks so, like. I think they're 16 by 16s. But they have to run that wheel. And they they run, uh, if you ever look at when Clay was telling you that they need to have wheel speed right at the beginning, they, they need to spin the tire. They actually need to shake the tire. Kind of, yeah. They, they, they still need, as I understand it, I'll ask Clay. I thought they still needed to fold the tire over to get it to paddle. Some way to generate wheel speed. Yeah, it's got a paddle and that actually makes traction or something like that. We'll ask Clay that here in a minute. Let's ask Clay. Now, do you see that impact? I just think that's fascinating. Impact. And then their torquing heads, they're probably 100 and actually might be upwards of 200 pounds on those studs. There'd be four studs per cylinder on that. But when you have a stud that big and that good, uh, you can get a lot of clamping force on it. So uh, a little bit different deal than like what we're at. Get in here, you just need to Yeah. 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 These pilot shoots are talking about are super hard to do and put in. They must have a lot of spring pressure on the tube. Well, that's probably got it's probably got 500 pounds on the seat. Probably 1,250 or a no, probably right around there. Oh, I told you I'd show you the clutch deal. So they put the clutch in there in this big. Uh, fixture plate I would just say it is looks like it's solid that's solid that's a, a disc not exactly sure what all that is but uh, oh they got it clamp looks like they probably have that clamped down probably when it cools they probably oh they probably cool it in a clamped mode hmm that's what I would figure that would be Yeah, I had that when I was building the car. I freaking like filling up fuel. This is interesting. Like mixing the fuel, he's got a hydrometer to check the content, the, the nitro content. Oh. So we get fuel that comes to 100% nitro methane. You can only run a maximum of 90%. They did that years ago to try to slow us down some. Ah. Of course, crew chiefs figure out we're going faster now than ever, but... Yeah. <laughs> so, I mix it in the drum from 100 down to about 90. 90 is maximum. With methanol? With methanol. Yeah. And with temperature, it moves a lot, so I don't mix everything as you go. I mix it per run. Okay. And basically, oh. you know, we save a little bit of room in case it's really hot, really crappy. Our tune-up is kind of, normally we're around 88%, where most of the teams out here are dead on 90, and if you're 90.1, you're running. They'll bump you. Yeah. Oh, really? Are they, are they uh, doing a fuel sample at the end of the Every track? Run. Every run. Every run. Freaking right. All right. <laughs> they normally have the barrel valve line off before I've even humped out of the car. Okay. Really? Oh, oh, I see. So, so you're just topping these off right now, right? Or you're mixing them? Mixing, just very filtered air, low pressure. Kind of funny. That's a uh, fire system, me. Yeah, yeah, fire, yeah, nozzle. Put some, put some mixing in there. Uh, take this deal, which is just a hydrometer. Hydrometer is measuring uh, how what percentage of what methanol percentage? is in. Percentage of nitro. Percentage of nitro. Measure nitro, not methanol. Okay. This silly thing right here is thirty-five hundred dollars. 
<laughs> yeah, I figured. Everybody wants a race car, right? Yeah, everybody. I know it's a great thing. <laughs> All I did was suck a sample in there, and it's 89% at 77, 78 degrees, whatever. Ah. So I'll add alcohol, methanol to it to get it down to whatever demo wants me to run. Gotcha. Cool. And most of the drivers fix fuel simply because the crew wants us out of their way. <laughs> Yeah. Go over there and mix the fuel. Leave me alone. <laughs> hey, Jeff, I wanted to talk to you about uh, getting into an SMX engine for all of your cars. Every one of them. You know, they're going to be a much better platform, way more horsepower, not going to break this stuff like you have been. Yeah, I would really like to do something like that, you know. Well, let me tell you some more about it. Oh, I'd, I'd love to hear about it. Let's just start telling me about it. Well... You know, i got some problems with this guy over here, that guy over there, and, you know, it, it's crazy. But uh, let's start talking about it, and uh, I'd like to hear it. But let's first, let's stand here with our hands behind our back and, and look at this thing. You know, what I'm really interested in is if you could do a top fuel Hemi engine, but uh, for methanol and uh, with water jackets and everything. On top fuel, or on nitromethan. Well, I can't do that. Okay, so what they're doing right here is they're tightening loosening the intake manifold they put this fixture plate on there and what it does is making sure that the intake manifold is square and flat for the blower to sit on has all those little indicators in there i didn't get the whole process for them but they're going around and they're tightening intake bolts to make sure that it is perfectly flat because you can't make the thing perfectly flat just by same torque on all of them that doesn't make that surface flat that surface isn't flat that's a big freaking deal for that blower fascinating deal as a matter of fact it must have been bad enough that they're taking it back off so they're doing something with it so it wasn't flat and now they're going to take that off hmm let me go in here the cylinder head this is unprecedented access make sure you go tell clay how awesome this is that he would uh let us do this that nozzles right there those are fuel nozzles spraying at the intake valves that's the ability goodness spares not really spares just going next run <laughs> next, oh next run ah uh, that's true yeah yeah next really yeah a new set of heads every pass well, within fresh, reason freshen up. Fresh up yeah 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 freshen up i understand Dang. And when they have time during qualifying like they'll start servicing the heads that we just run that way oh. they don't they're not stacked up ready oh make some noise yep let's go make some noise that's okay clay you can just leave me hanging and go out and start your car uh, smx technology uh, direct nozzle, to, not, I'm sorry, it's not direct nozzle, but uh, nozzle's up at the intake port, it's crazy. Blake, you guys are They're getting ready to start the car again. Yeah, that was nice. Oh, I like that, that valve spring compressor. What makes that? Hartman Machine Works. I like the handle. Those are three thousand short. This this rack is one thousand short. So. All right. So let me explain exactly why those pistons and rods are in racks and have the uh, plus or I'm sorry minus three minus one. So what they do, I did not know this. What they do is every time they make a pass, all right, they take the piston and rod out of the engine, they take the piston and rod apart, and they measure how much everything got crushed. Every pass, it crushes the connecting rod and makes it shorter. Every pass, it crushes the piston and makes it shorter. So they have a fixture, they put the piston in a fixture, 
uh, with a pin here. They have a preset height, so it's all exactly the same. They come in there, they roll it, and they go, yep, that thing is now 1,000 shorter. Then they come in here to the, they have a fixture that holds the connecting rod and measures it off the pin. They go ding, 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 ding with a, a indicator right there. And they go, yep, this is 2,000 shorter now or 3,000 shorter. So they then pair them up so everything, all eight are all the same. So they're taking, swapping different pistons, different holes, or maybe from the other run. They're all making these new, uh, not new, but good used next round piston and rods if they need to. So they don't just, see, they're, they're frugal. That's what I figure. Top fuel frugal. Not really, but they don't wanna just throw brand new pistons and rods in, in, in every single pass. There is a limit to what you're gonna do. It's, 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 uh, it's enough of what they do for sure. But really fascinating on how every time the uh, top fuel is crushing the rod to make it shorter, crushing the piston to make it shorter, and they're all different dimensions, and so they're balancing them all out so each one goes in and is gonna be the same height in the board for that next pass. Different runs, and then they rack them, they get another rack built. You know how many passes they're making on? I have no idea. Right. And it like there's a there's an I'm This will forever crack me up on how they take the line off there to shut the engine off and then it squirts fuel all over. What they're talking about here is once the piston pin, your piston has crushed too much, it would get out of shape and you couldn't put the piston pin back in the bore. of well whatever you're literally there's all the crowd here is the track clay milliken coming up here our buddy clay
Now right here, he's waving at us and saying, hey, you guys move away from the wall because you're gonna get killed. Gets into 72 clubs. So this is what a top fuel flush looks like after you get out of the way. At least in the important part of it. Oh, still heat coming off of here. Feels nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't lean against that. Yeah, do not lean against that or touch them. Those are all friction plates. Well, no, friction plates and then... Uh, yeah, your, your yeah. floaters in the middle. Yep, floaters in the middle. Is that the back part or the front part? This, this is part that actually sandwiches against the back disc. Okay. Oh. These can hold it together. And okay. This is what's actually cutting the last disc. Yeah, that's it. Duck? A little bit. Oh, it's got hold it in. Yep. Got gotcha. Fancy. That's where all the magic happens. That's right. So do you bolt it down to keep it from warping? Or is it just that that's what, the that's heat what this one does, draws heat out and keeps it from warping? So this is the actual like pressure plate. We call this a cover for a hat. Okay. So the levers are gonna apply pressure to each of these carbides. Okay. And that we you know centrifugal, right? Yeah. So it's gonna throw all that weight out and actually push the pressure plate. To clamp all those. Sandwich everything together against the plywood. Gotcha. Yep. Very cool. Very, very cool. I see they've all got different numbers and oh, yeah. thicknesses and yep. yep, that's the that's the real trick to a top field card. Yep. And every disc wears like the clutches wear a certain amount and then he'll re-skim them. I wonder how many laps to get out of that. I think three or four. But they, they'll mix like not, they all won't wear evenly for whatever reason. And so huh. they'll, they'll mix and match. They'll even mix and match different batches of clutches. So you never get something that's a total change. Like if you got one disc, kind of weird yeah the other pack will kind of absorb it rather than you you know you say you run your clutches out for the season and then buy all new you're totally out in left field so you kind of incrementally change them so that you know it's small changes rather than just one huge wholesale change on the clutch right makes sense yeah. I would assume I would assume that that clutch dust was not there when they put it on. So I mean, that's all stuff that's off of here from where. Yep. Yeah, the flywheel. We don't. We didn't see the flywheel, but like he was saying, this is the back. That piece is put together, and then that's clamping all of these as it. Right. And this is this is actually the coupling shaft. Yep. It goes on the backside. So this slides into the rear end yoke, basically. Yep. And then the other side goes into- So what this is, is this is direct drive. The crankshaft is directly hooked up to the rear end via that shaft. So that little reverser rod there, that is the only thing that allows this to go backwards. Otherwise it is only meant to go forward and in drive. Got it? No. Which side started? Hey, 
Same problem putting those pilot chutes in, like ours. They have that same pilot chute set up. It's not a, it's not a CO2 launcher, it's a whole pilot chute thing. So that's why they're all struggling putting them in. Two people job. Just like sugar mama. Got a little oil down, so they're wiping everything up. That clamp right there, and then the clamp right up here, and then there's two on the other side. That is all that holds a 12,000 horsepower engine into the chassis. That's it. There's no bolts, there's no welds. It is four hose clamps. All right, the one thing that they would not allow me to do or Kevin to do was video in the uh, crew chief quarters of Jimmy up there and his crew chief, uh, Jimmy and uh, Nick Bonifante. Anyways, uh, he wouldn't let us video there, but we still got to go up there and he's showing us all the data. So I'm looking at the data from that pass of what all was going on, that, that exact pass to see every number and then have Jim just go over stuff and he's, he's answering questions. I ask him a question, he answers it. Kevin answers a question, he answers it. That's crazy. But I wanted to show you one of the things, uh, so I couldn't video it and show you what the, everything looked like, but uh, the one thing I have to show you so you understand what is going on because this is really, really interesting, okay? So a car like a, the typical Pro Mod car, uh, a Pro Mod car, uh, as I understand it, and this is, this is probably exactly accurate, a one flat 60 foot time. So your 60 foot time is 1.000 pulls three Gs. That is just basic math. That is simple deal. If it, if it made, if it went one zero zero 60 foot, it pulled three Gs. All right. So a car like mine is getting closer to that, but it's never going to go one oh one flat. But, uh, unless I uh, lost a thousand pounds. Uh, so, but your G meter, so right here, so let's say that's your launch, let go of the trans brake button, or, uh, well, we let go of the trans brake button. The G meter goes bing up here like this to, let's say three Gs in a pro modified car. It's probably a little bit more than that, probably like 3.2, 3.3-ish, right around there. Um, so we'll just say three Gs, and sometimes it'll just start it usually will carry it maybe for uh if it carried for two seconds that is billy bad boy uh, that would be one heck of a pass uh, and then it just kind of gradually goes down until the end of the pass so let's say uh 550 okay or now let's let's be more realistic in something like mine 60 okay <laughs> uh, so six seconds later it just goes down now the interesting thing so this is pro mod all right or any car, usually other cars, a normal car is like, bing, kind of goes up and then really falls off like right away, a lot less, okay? Might, might carry out a little bit, but. Um, top fuel, this is what's going on. And it is insane crazy, all right? So here's top fuel. So top fuel, clay hits the loud pedal, right? So here's zero, clay hits the loud pedal, it goes up to four, all right, and it's driving just like this for uh, approximately a second, I think it was. And then here's the crazy part. So that's four, that's, that's in G meter terms, I, that's a lot of acceleration. That's 0 0.8, uh, I think they went 0 0.834, 60 foot on that pass. I believe that's what the number was. Don't hold me to it, so, uh, but I think it was 0.834 at four Gs. All right, but here's the crazy part. It then, the car accelerates just like this, goes up and hits seven Gs. Seven Gs, <laughs> okay? That is astronomically big number. And here's the really amazing part. So it goes up to seven Gs, 
it kind of hovers up there and then it starts coming back down as it finishes the track and then you know 3.7 seconds thereabouts right there uh g meter is going down i think the g meter finishes out at and i didn't look at that number i think the g meter might finish out at like two or three g's okay uh which is like finishing the race at more g's than uh what you know a seven second car would even leave at all right here's the really amazing part all right now this is what engine rpm does now this isn't directly to scale okay so engine rpm uh goes from idle burp, comes up because he's whacking it right off idle so here's engine rpm burp, and right when it gets up here to peak g where it is accelerating the hardest all of a sudden the engine just lays over and actually goes backwards because the drive shaft speed is going like this it is all of a sudden matching uh, and exceeding uh, what does that do so it um, how's it I'm trying I'm not drawing that right but the forget about this this is engine rpm engine rpm goes up and right when it is loading the hardest and the clutch is just hunk hunkered down and making things happen and is accelerating at seven g's engine rpm starts going backwards okay so when clay was talking about throw everything out you know about uh nitromethane and gas or even methanol um if you're accelerating this hard and you're putting this much load on an engine in methanol i guarantee you it will break it if you did it on gas it wouldn't even bother breaking it'd just be blowed up before you even got to breaking <laughs> i mean it would you cannot you cannot do this kind of acceleration this kind of horsepower this is making 12,000 this horsepower right here and the clutch and everything is lugging the engine so hard it's actually going backwards and still accelerating so that's what the, the clutch is going and the engine's going and it's just it's getting beat up hard and uh, that is not tolerable in a methanol and definitely not tolerable in a gasoline engine at those kind of boost levels and horsepower levels not even remotely close so that is really fascinating stuff so anyways wrapping this thing up at clay's pit and then moving on to going and picking up uh the next stuff that we do including the sml all righty so we are closing up shop seeing clay make the last pass uh i think clay went to bed he might have. Uh, he might have. <laughs> okay, see, he's gone. So, Kevin, thanks for getting us in here. Yeah, thanks to Clay. Good to see Make you sure you go out. do everything. Go, go like, subscribe, Clay stuff. Make sure you go do that. So generous and letting me look around and do stuff. That's pretty. That's about. That is really cool stuff. Fascinating. Fascinating right. things Fascinating. there. I'll. We'll cover more crud. And thanks to Kevin. Yep. We're working together, man. Building yeah, man. cars, going fast. Exciting. All right, party on. Yep. See, ya. See y'all later. All right, we're at uh, day two in our journey. We're eating breakfast. Had an awesome day with uh, uh, in Clay Milliken's pit. Make sure we got to help support people that are supporting us. Make sure you go say something, comment on all of this stuff. Um, he's, he's a genuinely good guy. Really like him. And uh, to give access into the whole pit. I mean, we were up there, showed you, or couldn't show you some stuff because they didn't want us to put it on film. But, <clears throat> um, so on his last stuff, it was awesome. Anyways, I thought you'd find this funny. Gonna give you two opportunities to come up with movie, a movie and TV show references. I'm eating grits. Kiss my grits. TV show reference, what is it? And then, these are instant grits. No self-respecting southerner can eat instant grits. Just left breakfast. Did you get the TV reference and the movie reference? Anyways, we're uh, we're traveling to the next destination. Traveling home, so we're leaving Jacksonville, Florida. We stayed in Jacksonville, Florida last night because it's on the way home, ish. Uh, so we're gonna be picking up stuff, two different stops to pick up stuff, and show you some. Well, right here, you can see this. 
That's a viper block that we picked up at Kevin's. And then on the other side of it is... There you go, it's an LS block that we got from Kevin's. Nope. Nope, can't even see it. All right, I'll show you that later. Uh, we gotta stop pick up some shipping blankets because we got more stuff we gotta pick up. So, funny thing. So we had to fly down here to get the van because we drove or had this van driven down here for sick week to sell t-shirts and stuff and this van breaks down transmission and so saw that they, they finally got it done it's a march something that was in january <laughs> uh, anyways they got it done uh, so far so good everything looks great um so we had to fly down here and so we had to take an uber from uh the uh, airport to the hotel and then the hotel to the uh, transmission shop and the uber driver to the transmission shop nice old guy and he tells us he goes yeah he says i can't do this or can't do that because i'm on a fixed income <laughs> and i immediately think and my wife immediately thinks it's like you realize we this is the definition of not a fixed income or in your uber <laughs> anyways onward ho we are heading up, I think we're going up 295, right? Yeah, we're up 295. So, let's see where we're going next. All right, stop. It's supposed to be actually like stop two and a half. Or maybe we have folks call it stop three. So, I had to, so met up over here. I would have liked to have gone over to Chaotic Speed Shop, but it's like, it's a few hours out of the way and it's like, we're just driving too much. So, Shane, about three hours away. So Shane is kind enough to meet me over here in Savannah because Shane got the first SML in his car and it's finally back for fresh enough. And so we're figuring out how we're gonna ramp these things over from from uh, one arch to the next. So um, should be interesting. It should be interesting. I think it's gonna it's gonna go way better than you think. All right, but I think I gotta get closer. I'm gonna get closer. off the end if you see this board like really really bad <laughs> what watch so it doesn't slip off the edge potential danger right there that's pretty good so come around the back door so we'll move this thing around to make it to our next destination so you see we got the we have a varied world of stuff in here well actually not too often varied we got sml of shane's make sure you go to their to their website or to their website and to facebook what's your youtube channel going i have not i'm so busy too busy to have a YouTube channel. Yeah. Just wait till you get a YouTube channel. And yeah. Then you're really screwed. I don't know if I can do it. Uh, let's see. I got all that stuff to pick up. And I got a draft here. But make sure you go over Chaotic Speed. They're pretty cool. Do cool stuff. Street cars. Huh? Street cars. Street car stuff. Yeah. Hot road. Big donks. This isn't a donk. Yep. All right. I don't figure out how I'm going to strip, 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 strap this down. Yeah, there's some right there. So we got LS block, a Viper block, SML. We're about ready to have. Can't tell you. Surprise. Yeah, it's a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> I almost spilled the beans right there. Awesome. All right, cool. Everything's been flawless. Been flawless. <laughs> no problems. I kind of hated pulling it out. But better safe than sorry. Yeah. It makes good power. It's oh, been fast. It's real fast. Cool. Awesome. Faster than I ever thought it would Yeah. I know. I'd like to go testing with it again. We, we went testing with this, and there's a video. We'll put this up in here, one side or the other, uh, of when we first got it out. It was a couple years ago now. Two years ago. 
Yeah. Year and a half ago, yeah. No, it's been almost two years. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, like June, maybe? Yeah. May, June, something like that? Yeah. July yeah. 22? Back when he was, he was, he was a little bit bigger back then, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's lost a lot of weight. Oh, 85 pounds. Oh, wow. Good for you. Yeah. So, all right, cool. All right, on to the next one. Um, we'll strap this thing down and get going. Yep, for sure. All right, buddy. South Carolina is full. They're turning people back. It's interesting. They're turning people back. There's <laughs> huh? It's just a bottle not getting in. Uh, everybody, everybody wants to be there. Everybody, oh, it's everybody wants to be here. I gotcha. We're here. I see there's already stuff going on. I'm lagging. Kind of in town here. <laughs> in the middle of town. Yeah. Now, when I say in town, I mean this is in the middle of a residential area. I mean, like tight neighborhood. And now it's showing me all the parts he cut off the car. Shame, 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 shame. But some cars got to sacrifice since they don't make new parts. And I'm not going to put rusty parts on the car. These wagons need your help. Here at Steve Morris Engines No Kill Shelter, we care about wagons. We care about what happens. This kind of carnage, it's terrible. And with your help, and subscriptions, we can help save all these wagons. Ultimately, I will convince my wife to let me buy more. We need your help. Contact us at stevemorrisengines.com. No fear of cutting parts. I think he cut these whole, uh, whole quarters off with that same battery operated sawzall that's a bad dude there's a wife up there wondering what in the heck is going on yeah we're just cutting these edges off so he can make it fit inside the pro master
Yeah, I'm doing these whole doors just to get these mirrors. Oh, yeah. Not just the mirrors, but I mean to have the, the correct door without the... Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the whole thing, yeah. Some people try to drill them, but it's not the same. No. Nah. Because you got a big flat spot right here in the door then. Right. All right, so we are on uh, the trek home. We got the Steve Morris merchandise slash engine slash body part hauler over here. Since it was late last night, we couldn't show you the uh, all of the uh, B body burial ground and what all was going on inside. Let's, uh, I'll show you here what all we got. Bing! Two doors. Really nice and good and solid. I mean, there's no, uh, no rust there at all. No rust there at all. And two full quarters. I mean, this is the, the whole quarter. Wheel well and all. I don't need and glass and this one one pillar right here they still don't know what's going on because it's different than on the caprices darn it get over there oh, never mind guess I'll show you later all right so it is time to go wife wants to go she's ready <laughs> it's a little colder here too so hasta la vista Winston-Salem, North Carolina, back to Michigan. Welcome to Virginia. It's for lovers. Be careful because the weather will kill you. If the fog doesn't get you, the high wind advisory will, or falling rocks. It's awesome. And here we're coming up to this super cool tunnel, Walker Mountain Tunnel. And apparently there's another lane on the other side of the wall on the left. That's your emergency exit. And I think there's a whole road in there too. I wasn't gonna stop and uh, open up one of the doors to look in there. Ah, sunshine. Now we've entered into West Virginia. Ironically enough, West Virginia is exactly the same as Virginia. They tries to kill you in multiple different ways, and it was actually windier there. And snowy. Ah, Michigan. What's the first signs you see when you go to Michigan? Weed, weed, weed. Michigan, the land of many potholes, crappy roads. Thanks, Gretchen Whitmer. And pass the joint, dude. <laughs> 